What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are gonna build a very useful, simple tool. It's gonna be super, super easy and we are gonna turn flanges by hand with simple tools today. Working on installing a 19 something 80s Jaguar gas cap recessed into a pocket like this in this fender. So don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. All right, so I just wanna start from the beginning with this. Uh, a friend of mine brought me this fender. This is a, uh, I think a 1950, um, I could be wrong. I'm definitely wrong on that. It's, it's, it's a really cool Plymouth hot rod that a buddy of mine built. And um, basically he had the idea of having this really cool flip top gas cap installed. This is a, a Jaguar piece. It's got like a locking gas cap. You press this down, it hinges open. It's just like a nice solid chrome, cool gas cap. He wants it put in this fender. So he brought the piece from the car. So this has been just kind of crudely chopped out of the Jaguar. And um, this is the outer sheet metal of the car flanged over a inner stamped piece that mounts the gas cap. Um, it also has this extra drainage hole. Like if you were to spill a little bit of gas, I think that's what that's for. Um, so basically um, my original thought was, okay, well, what we could do is we could cut this out and sort of weld it in there, but it wouldn't really look right because this is kind of dead flat, right? This is dead flat and he wants it to go in the exact spot that his old gas cap used to go so that the um, gas tank and the filler neck and everything is, is proper and there is a curve on this. So because this is curved and this is dead flat, if I were to weld this into there, it would kind of make a flat spot. It could be kind of weird. I don't know. I wasn't into it. So. My thought past that was, okay, well, how could we flange this sheet metal to be this oval shape and then just use this stamped piece and slip it on the backside, like basically mimic exactly what they did here, but in this fender already. A couple things that would do for us, it would eliminate the perimeter weld of the flange. If I were to you know, cut this out and weld this in, I would have this long weld. That's probably in reality like, 14 to 16 inches of weld. Like that's a lot of weld. You're gonna have to planish that, grind that, work that. Well, my solution to this problem is a flange tool. So what we're gonna build today is a simple tool made out of solid steel. We're gonna find a chunk of scrap steel and we're gonna cut a slot in it. And basically that tool will slip onto the edge of the sheet metal and we'll be able to just flange the sheet metal down. So we're gonna cut an oval in here um, that's, that's you know, maybe a half an inch shy of what the full perimeter is. And then we're gonna flange half an inch of that material down so that it works just like this one. Um, so step one for that, if you get, catch my drift, um, I actually saw this in the scrap bin earlier. It's just like a chunk of, I believe that's half inch thick. Uh, maybe by three quarter inch wide. Looks like I zip cut it off of a piece of flat bar or something. We're gonna use this and I'm gonna cut a slot in here that's half an inch deep. I'm gonna cut one perpendicular to this edge and then I'm gonna cut another one on an angle. And the reason being is that we'll be able to use the tool you know, only so far until we run into a problem. And if we can't get it further, then we'll have to have another part in here that's got a slot in it on a different angle so that we can work it all the way around. Okay, so um, step one for me is I'm going to template this. Oh, I'm gonna extract this sheet metal off of the piece that we are gonna use, which is this stamped inner with our threads. Um, I'm gonna grind all those spot welds out. You can see they're spot welded from the factory. Um, there's little dots here. Those are all the welds. So from the inside, I'm gonna grind those little dots away. That way this outer tin will release from that inner piece that we wanna keep and we won't have damaged this piece at all. Um, and then we'll be able to trace that onto our actual fender and then flange it from there.
All right, so uh, what you saw was just me extracting this piece from our tin. The way I like to do that is very simple. I just locate the spot welds. I grind them a little bit with just a simple uh, carbide bit on an air grinder. And then I'll cut away the excess sheet metal till it was just the band. And then it becomes very easy to knock them um, like to separate them with an air hammer. This is actually meant to do this. This is a, a spot weld cutting tool and it's meant to shear spot welds. And you could just shear spot welds with this high air pressure, lots of power. You could just shear spot welds. You wouldn't even have to grind them, but that's more meant for um, against like a thicker gauge material, such as like a body mount. Picture the floor of the 60s car and you're trying to peel the floor pan off of that. Um, no need to really grind those spot welds. You could just cut with a zip cut next to it and then use this and just just buck them right off. But when we're doing something a little bit more delicate like this, I like to um, grind most of the way through. You see, I didn't grind deeply into any of these spots. Um, mostly I just ground barely into the spot weld and then was able to just kind of shear the rest of it off because of how weak it became from being ground a little bit with this. Um, that's how I like to do it did not warp this piece at all. Like this is tin, this is stamped. We don't want it to get damaged. So um, it still fits nicely with our cap. We didn't ruin the piece. So what I'm gonna do is actually trace out this on here. We are going to cut what, whatever the distance is, but you know, we're gonna trace this inside of the tin onto here, we'll get an oval. Then we're gonna mark half an inch in from that um, and then make another oval and that's our cut line. So we'll have half an inch flange to the point where it needs to bend to accept this piece from underneath. Um, and then we'll build our flange tools. So template next and then we'll build the tool. So I had an idea when Elio posed a question about how are we gonna get this to stretch, right? So this is the flange that's gonna be turned down. So I first marked it off and then stood off of there a little bit and just kind of cut out that inner circle, leaving us about a half an inch. Um, there's actually a little less than a half an inch here because the template that I made was a little bit tight. So it's a little bit small by about a 16th. So anyway, neither here nor there. What the plan is now is to build this tool that I've been talking about to turn this flange down. Now, as we turn this flange down, the way these little tools work is that just because you're doing so many small increments all the way around, it slowly stretches it as it goes. But when we get into tight areas, such as this tight of an area, this tighter corner here, um, for this flange to turn all the way down, it's going to have to stretch quite a bit. And because Elio asked the question of how are we gonna get it to stretch that much, um, I was thinking ahead a little bit and knowing that we're gonna to have to drill holes in this flange for us to, stop, to spot weld back to this piece. What if we were to drill the holes first? If we drill the holes first right now, number one, it will be easier to drill these holes um, facing out this way just because we can get, get at it rather than if these holes were on the inside, it would be a little bit more difficult. Number two is that 
if we have holes in this flange while we're using our flange turning tool, perhaps, well actually, I'm not even gonna say perhaps, I know that because there's a hole in the flange, it will be weaker in that spot and it will allow it to stretch a little bit easier. So if we have a bunch of holes that we're gonna be putting in it anyway, why don't we try putting them in first and allowing those spots to stretch easier? I think if I'm thinking ahead, this might be overthinking, but. Okay, so we'll flip that over. We'll clean it up a little bit on the back side. All right, here we are, it's time to make a tool. So, like I was saying in the beginning, we are gonna do a cut perpendicular to the edge, half an inch deep on one end, and on the other end, we are gonna do a cut that comes in on an angle this way, maybe like a 30 degree angle or something like that. Um, and that's so that once we've turned this all the way till we hit the point where we touch here, then we can flip it around, use this end, and we can grab a little bit more and get to our full 90 all the way around. Um, I have not made one of these tools before. I have seen them before. I have, you know, I've just not made them before. I've always found a different way. So this uh, is a little new for me and new for you guys. So. Or maybe it's not new for you guys. I don't know. We're gonna go in half an inch. We're gonna keep checking it with our ruler, but that is the plan. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Nailed it. Gonna just kind of blunt the sharpness of that. Probably use a file actually. Grinding just a little bit of the tip, like the very sharpness of the tip off. Kind of want that to be able to move freely. I just don't want it to catch. We're gonna be moving this along quite a bit in there, so we don't want it to catch. All right, there it is. Should we polish this? I mean, it, it would work so much better if it was polished, right? Okay, so we're not gonna polish it, but I gave it a little 80 grit, make it look like we care, you know, caring. Um, one thing that I was thinking about as well is that, yes, this, this, this bottoms out nice and flat on the areas that are pretty flat, but in the areas that we're going around a corner, we should probably curve the bottom of this trough just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna use a hacksaw here and just, just a little bit. I think I'm just gonna give ourselves a little bit of a, just a little bit of a cut. Take some of the edge off of that. Just for when we're going around a corner. This is just me thinking, it probably doesn't matter, but you know, it's just a little, little bit of thinking. Take, take away a little bit of that corner. Okay, I'm like so ready to try this. 
feel like we've been ramping up to this like the entire day. Okay, so like I said, this is gonna go past this because our original measurement was, was smaller, but this is half inch, so we're just gonna give it a little bend, give it a little bend, a little bend. Like we're talking little bends. You can't go too far as well because you've just got a slot. You've only got a slot. Ooh, I wonder if this needs to be rounded. Because we go around this corner here, these corners are gonna dig in. I think this needs to be rounded also. We're learning. Okay, 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 okay. Could you pass the, uh, the make it beautiful? Thank you. Oh, nice. Okay, other side. We gotta do the same thing to this thing, right? Do we? I don't know, don't we? We don't want those. No. We don't want weird little kinks happening, do we? Nope. Okay. Okay. Let's try it. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm taking biting off too much too fast because it's there we go. Little bit at a time. Very little bit at a time. Just gotta keep working it. I suppose if the slot was a little thicker, maybe that would help also. Yeah, it's definitely working. It's definitely getting some, some shape. I gotta freehand it in this spot that doesn't have enough flange. One of the things that's happening right now is that in the tight corner where I've said is going to need the most amount of stretch, because we've drilled these holes there and it's weak in that area, yes, it is kind of working. Like we're, we're getting the stretch we need out of the rounded sections, but right in the centers of that harsh radius, um, it has actually broken the sheet metal flange on the outside of the um, of the weld, which is not a big deal. That hole that's welded, that little tiny, tiny piece that I said was gonna probably stretch as we go around, it's a little bit too much for it right in the peak of the corner. So you can see here, I'll grab that from you, Elio. You can see right here, right there, it is broken. But otherwise, it is working and we are turning this lip down. I might clean this paint off because it's all cracking and flaking off anyway so that we can really see the radius that we're getting.
Okay, so where we're at right now is I'm noticing a little bit of slippage with this tool. Like as, as we're bending it over, it's kind of slipping a little bit. So perhaps it could be a little bit deeper, but um, basically right now, this edge is a little bit too soft. So that edge is gonna need to be crisped up to move this flange a little bit wider. Um, and so what we're gonna do is probably use hammer and dolly to try and move a little bit more of that material. Um, and then also we're gonna tack this in place with, once we get a couple of spot welds close, we'll tack this in place and then we'll actually hammer into this um, using this piece itself as the dolly. And we'll just keep working it. Like just slowly keep working it all the way around and it'll stretch a little each time you hit it with a hammer. Like this takes time, but when you're talking about simple tools that you can make for like scrap metal, um, the time is the exchange, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of time to, to work the metal, but we're gonna get there with simple stuff. All right, so where are we at? We're at a very sore arm and um, an unexpected amount of work. <laughs> this is a little bit more work than I originally anticipated and I think that um, it's because I didn't make a big enough flange tool. Um, as, as I was flanging it, I think that the flange kept slipping and uh, didn't give us enough material. So I've had to hand hammer and work that flange over. Although the flange tool is still helping us in this situation because it, started the break and um, even though it sort of slipped and became a smaller flange it did start the break where it needed to be so and it did stretch it as we worked it into its 90 degree position but i have had to use a dolly on the back side hold a dolly in the corner and sort of massage a little bit more material into the flange to get this fitting close ish right now as it sits our inside gas structural piece that is sitting in there tightly right around the middle. Right here, it's, it's holding well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to now tack a couple of these spots so that it's holding it in place. And then we'll use a dolly on the other side of our structural oval piece and we'll just hammer and keep working all the way around it until our flange perfectly meets our piece that we have set from the backside. I think we're gonna be okay doing that. My only concern with that is that uh, maybe we won't be able to crisp up this edge, which now that I'm thinking about it, might be kind of important. Maybe we should work this flange by hand the entire way, or at least until we have a nice edge here, because this edge is starting to rip a little bit. So we don't want that to get away from us and we don't want it to be unrepairable once the other piece is in. Um, Things I'm considering. If we heated up that edge with the torch just a little bit, it would also help it massage over. Yeah. Um, learning experience, guys. This is the first time mm -hmm. I'm doing this, so. Um, I hope feel like this would work too if we preheated even just from here to here to allow the metal to stretch out. 
Yeah, it would almost anneal it. It'd definitely make it softer. Like as soon as you add heat and then you can just slowly hammer that over. Maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll tack a couple spots that fit right now and then we'll just gingerly with the torch massage the rest of it over. And if all else fails... I don't want just... anything to fail. This is my friend's fender. <laughs> all right, so I gotta tell you guys, I went and had a coffee just chilled out for a minute because like this is this is a bit different than what I had expected it to be and I and I'll tell you why and it's what I was kind of talking about before is that this is a very harsh radius so this tool that we made where did I put it oh, right there. this tool it's like a really awesome tool for doing say slow radiuses um, maybe we'll even do one just to show it. Um, but this is actually like a very aggressive shape. So it, this tool is kind of not, it wasn't really doing the trick. So um, anyway, it helped us in the beginning, but we are gonna have to use a little bit more aggressive measures now. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna both like pull the torch out and uh, basically like these edges here, we've got those shaped up pretty well, um, but I'm going to mark approximately where we need the actual finish line to be because we are we are we are actually moving this over a little bit for it to be right so um, that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark the actual finish line and then we are going to heat this up to make it soft enough that we can hammer and dolly the the flange over like i'm just going to put a dolly on the back side like the dolly will be here and then we'll hammer it over and then we'll move the dolly to here and we'll hammer it over and we'll move the dolly to here and we'll hammer it over and we'll just kind of work that area to, uh, to get the flange while heating it at the same time so that it's a little bit easier for us to stretch because that aggressive of the tip of an oval, it is, it's a bunch of stretch. Okay, so I'm just putting the flame at uh, what they call like a carburizing flame. A little bit extra tail in that um, versus that being a neutral flame for cutting where you just have the cones there, make it a little bit, it makes the flame a little bit cooler and not so harsh like right at the tip. I just got this little stand here so that it can be running. Ooh, hopefully it's not gonna fall. Um, got my hammer and dollies ready to go. Here's my dolly, here it is. Got my marks. So I'm just gonna heat this flange up. Try not, put, try not to put a ton of heat into this fender because I don't want to warp the crap out of it, but just kind of anneal what we've got there. Actually, we'll go one more round of heating that. Yeah. Okay. 
But I took I took the flat spot out. From oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 from here. So just a little bit more on that side, and then we are gonna have to go over this. I'm gonna sand a little bit more paint away so that I can kind of hammer and dolly any of the waves out of here because I can see there's there's been quite a bit of affected area. So after we get the flange turned on this end, um, we're gonna clear off some paint and then just kind of work the area, make sure that it looks unaffected. Okay. Actually, let's check this too to make sure that sits on there nice. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be good. This might have to get pulled back a little bit even. Went a little bit too far in that, that spot. Okay, let's work this other side. Well, I just think that tool just like wasn't deep enough. Okay, now we can kind of better see what uh, what has misshapen a little bit. I, I noticed that I've got like a bit of a line here. There's almost like a crease. Maybe I was holding the dolly a little bit weird, but um, we're gonna have to hammer and dolly that a little bit. Just a couple of little areas. It really isn't that bad, but um, I'm still working this flange down from heating it. And it's kind of, it's getting, it's getting there. Same as the other side, it's gonna get there. Right now I'm just working the edge. I've got the dolly, the corner of the dolly right sitting right in this edge and I'm hitting the hammer right here, right along that so that it's, it's getting this edge transferred on the back side of here. Not too bad. This piece just about fits on mint. Has to twist a little bit, so you might have to. Well, it's also that straight on. Yeah, that's looking all right. I think that looks cool. Okay. I'm just gonna hit this with 80 grit so that I can better see kind of what's still needs a little bit of work, but I think it's like pretty close. I can tell that just the edge could be worked a little bit so that there isn't a bunch of Bondo on this spot to fix up what I've messed up. So yeah, I'm just gonna hit it with a bit of 80 grit and we'll try and get it a little bit closer and then we'll start welding it in. So right now I'm just gonna go around and crisp up this edge 
and try and make it flow nice. There's a couple of little flat spots and a couple of little kinks from hammer marks that I'm just gonna try and get out so that um, I'm not so worried about the inside of the flange because obviously you're not gonna see it. Number two, we're gonna be welding and grinding that in a minute um, and it's gonna need more hammering. So I'm just looking at this outer surface and this outer edge before we put that piece on the backside and are unable to you know, come back and do anything with this. We gotta do that first. So I'm um, just going around with the dolly using the edge of the dolly and, um, and just putting it, backing it up on the inside here and just, uh, just kind of planishing around it. For example, right here, we've got a break in the spot weld hole that we've drilled. And this is a low spot. You can, you can see that like the sanding hit there and hit there. I can actually feel that it's a low spot. So we're gonna have to bring that up. Um, so I'm gonna have the dolly on the back side of this. I'm gonna hammer down on this side and this side to bring that back up. Another spot here, it's a little bit low again, caused by it spreading one of the holes. So my experiment of putting these holes in, I would not do that again. So I, I thought it would work. It did kind of do a little bit what I said it would. Some of them are kind of oval holes now because they stretched, but it's more of a pain in the ass than it's worth because a bunch of them broke and created a bunch of low spots that I'm repairing now. So um, don't do what I did there. Learn from my mistakes. Say we got that one. Okay. I think it's time to throw a tack on or get ready to. So what is holding us up right now? Okay, I'm gonna use this to adjust the flange a little bit. All right, looks good. I think we're ready to throw a tack on it. Right now we're gonna adjust the welder to uh, something I think is gonna be able to be a very hot, quick tack. I don't want it to be hot enough that it's gonna burn it through, but I want it to be hot enough that it'll melt it so that I can, I can do it quickly. So uh, I'm gonna try D7 on this Lincoln 175.
Okay, I'm gonna use this. Oh, that should probably be helpful, yeah. Uh, actually, the uh, the pinch, pinching ones. Um, yeah. Let's see if the little bit, yeah, right there. Let's pull it. Okay. Okay, as we say here at Make It Custom, it ain't perfect, but it's 100% good enough. And uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I think it sits in there beautifully. It kind of sinks down a perfect amount so that it sort of hides with the fender. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Like you saw the struggle. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the flanges. I would not recommend drilling those holes first um, because then the flange can evenly distribute its stretch along something that is the same strength the entire way instead of being weakened by the holes. Uh, it also ended up splitting on me, so I, I was kind of fighting that a little bit through the whole, whole process because anywhere where it split, it's like a major weak spot and it wanted to kink the metal. So um, don't do what I did there, but uh, certainly make yourself a flanging tool. Um, know that if you're gonna do as harsh of a flange as what we did here today, that there will be a little bit of extra work with hammer and dolly or and or uh, the heat as well with a torch always helps to soften the metal as you're doing a lot of stretch or a lot of shrink. Thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. If you haven't already, drop a comment. That really helps us out. And if you'd like to support in another way, we have the custom crew membership. It is $5 a month. You get 15% off at the merch store as well as a badge by your name that makes it easier to search in the comments. So if you were thinking about getting maybe a Mother Tucker hammer or a sweatshirt or something like that, it would totally pay for itself. But uh, anyway, we'll catch you next time on Make It Custom. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye-bye.